Alrighty. Everything's looking good. On my end at least. Um whew, three concurrent viewers. Uh yeah, so I'm trialing out a new um new setup today. So you can probably tell the quality is a little bit better than last time. Um, but yes, so as part of this there will be a slight delay between when I see your comment and then respond to it and yeah, all that. Um, I can see your comments in real time but uh, because there's a delay in just the, the way, the, the stupid way that YouTube works, um, yeah, we're gonna have a little bit of a delay. It should be no more than about 30 seconds. But yeah. I've, yeah, it's been a, I've just, um, what do you call it? Bought all, bought all the stuff to, uh, to make this setup in the past week or so. Of course I'm using my uh, my main camera as the main video source, um, my Sony, uh, and I've got it plugged into my computer and I also bought a new microphone to plug into my computer. So all to say there's new stuff, um, yeah. So, channel updates. Yes, I've just already covered. Um, I'm using the Open Broadcast Studio software, otherwise known as OBS. And I've heard a few complaints from friends about it, but uh, we'll see how I, I like it. it. Seems to be doing just fine for now. Um, I updated the alignment of WebDoc uh, on my All Lines Rail Map, which is now going to be included in the description of all future live streams and videos. So if you would like to check that out at some stage, if you haven't already, then yeah, it'll be in the description. Um, I also stated in a previous uh, live stream that uh, HCMT trains, the new Melbourne trains, were running on 3000 volt DC motors. That was incorrect. Uh, I've since found out that it is uh, three phase AC variable voltage variable frequency. So, yeah. Um, if you're interested in that, just search YouTube and stuff for. V, 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 F. Uh, yeah. Um, so, on to the main topic. And let me just drop this a little bit. Okay, that's a bit better. Uh, so, tonight's topic is rail trails. We're going to be talking about what rail trails are, just so that we're all on the same page. We're going to be talking about why they exist, why you might want to build one, uh, the benefits and disadvantages of them, alternatives to rail trails, uh, then we're going to touch on some specific examples and what I think uh, about all that, and then we're going to be talking about, finally, my own personal experience with rail trails. G'day Albert, good to see you here. So, so we're all on the same page, what are rail trails? They are a gravel path, uh, typically a gravel path along a rail corridor, an old rail corridor. Um, they will at times divert from that original alignment, uh, depending on at what stage they were built. Uh, but yeah, they can be varying quality. Um, that's one thing I really found out when I was building my uh, all lines map, looking up where all the rail trails were and uh, all of 
looking at um, like pictures of them and stuff. Some of them are really high quality services, others are not much more than a dirt track. So, yeah. Uh, g'day Melbourne and regional train vlogs. Uh, Comment fan says, I've been on the Great Victorian Rail Trail from Yay to Molesworth and back. Very nice. <clears throat> and Melbourne Regional Trains Vlogs asks, where did I get the Flinders Street 13 sign? Uh, it's over that way, isn't it? Yeah. In the background. Um, I got that, um, one of my friends, so one of my friends discovered uh, all of these old Flinders Street signs in the yard of a contractor and he bought all of the signs off the contractor uh, they were $200 each and then he sold them all off on Facebook at, at cost price he wasn't in the business of ripping anyone off uh, and since I was friends with him I said oh yes please I'll have Flinders Street 13 please because uh, Flinders, I, I'm on the Sandringham line, so uh, platform 13 is a, a little special one for me. And um, yeah, the uh, I, I he reserved the best quality 13 sign for me, but uh, yeah, there's a few other people who've got 13s as well. And all platforms, he managed to get all platforms except maybe 12 and. 14 I think anyway yeah that's how I that's how I got the sign and it's quite cool uh, I, I didn't I didn't think that I would be able to buy a Flinders Street sign uh, straight from the station I, ne I never thought I'd be able to do that uh, like I, I mean I mean like I'm the first owner of the sign if you don't include my friend, uh, yeah, since it came off the station. First collector, I should say. <clears throat> anyway, continuing on. Um, rail trails can be a little bit controversial and mainly because uh, rail fans say, oh, there should be uh, there should be an actual railway on this, not a rail trail, but what they don't take into account a lot of the time is the fact that, you know, a lot of these railways were built in the 1880s and if you go look at the parliamentary documents uh, where their construction was um, authorised, the reason for building a lot of them is stated that the roads were impassable. Now, obviously roads are a lot better today than they were in 1880, so yeah. Uh, that's a lot of railways just, if it, there's no need for them to exist today is what I'm trying to say. So yeah. The, there's no point complaining that, oh, it should be a railway a lot of the time. Uh, so getting into uh, the benefits a little bit. Uh, as a cycling slash walking path, uh, they actually, you know, are quite good because it's a nice long path. Um, you know, you might encounter the occasional road or something like that, but they're not that frequent. Um, you don't have to contend with traffic. It's lovely scenery. There's there's lots of uh, benefits. There's, they're low gradient. Um, even the steepest of railways, like uh, the Kudrua line in Victoria, in northeast Victoria, is a good example. That was one of the steepest lines on the Victorian railways. It had maximum gradients of 1 in 30, uh, which 
was indeed steep for a train, but not so much for when you're walking and cycling. Uh, so yeah. Um, Looking at comments, Melbourne Regional Regional Train Vlogs says, I've been on the Great Southern Rail Trail from Yarram to Alberton. Ah, very nice. Uh, I, of course, uh, walked the entirety of the Great Southern Rail Trail. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Oh, and Call You Mar TV. All right. I knew there was something that I was meant to be, that was better to be calling you, but my TV, fine. And g'day Herman's channel. Uh, Albert says, New South Wales never went for rail trails with a couple of exemptions uh, on the Reed Head and Toronto lines, which is a shame. Yeah, I kind of agree that it's a shame. And New South Wales takes a very different approach to closing railways than Victoria. New South Wales tends to leave their lines abandoned and not rip them up. Uh, that's because they require a parliament to specifically create a law to rip them up, uh, whereas you don't have Okay, Albert. <clears throat> yeah. Major stupid issues with my computer today. Oh, God, it's... I don't know what is going on. I cannot use my computer. My TV. G'day. Quit crying. Just bear with me for a minute. Right, can we at least access? Stream notes. Get a Discord bot. <clears throat> Alrighty. Lots of people joining. Alright. Oh. I might not be able to access my notes. I can for the minute, but yeah. Um so where were we? We were talking about low gradients. Oh, Discord bot is Herman's channel. Okay, cool. Uh, how to get the Flinders Street sign men's cam. Um, short answer, a friend um, found it in a contractor's yard and bought it for me. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Ooh, I'm back. I just had to hit record on my phone so that um, this could be recorded to uh, YouTube. Anyway. Uh, Alright. Huh. So, rail trails. Um, yeah, low, rel relatively low gradients are a pretty good thing in terms of uh, uh, walking and cycling. Uh, and 1 in 30 might be a lot for a train, but it's uh, certainly not for anyone walking or cycling. When roads can get up to probably 
one in ten maybe I'm just guessing maybe one in fifteen um, there are a number of other benefits to rail trails as well uh, ecological benefits uh, it allows a lot of um, plant growth and uh, animal connectivity <laughs> hi mum I'm live streaming Oh uh, yeah, mum just got back. Uh, and I think one of the biggest benefits of rail trails is that it allows you to travel on a closed line. You know, uh, as a railway enthusiast, I would love to travel on all lines, but uh, yeah, uh, if a line has closed you know well before my time then hey a, a rail trail is actually quite a nice thing um, and yes I know I have walked a couple of um, railways in the past which are abandoned have abandoned tracks left um, and yeah they they're okay um, they're quite good actually <laughs> but I just know that that's not so accessible to the general public you know it's something that I like it's something that I would do maybe you would as well but uh, yeah you it's not generally accessible for the public uh, preserves the alignment I've got written down for rail trails as a benefit this is another big one you you might not think of it like this if you're a railway enthusiast but building a rail trail means that the land isn't going to be sold off it's going to maintain one owner for the most part uh, and it's going to be continuous so if uh, you know, if uh, that you would like to reopen that line in the future, it is still possible, and it's a lot easier than if the land was sold off. So, yeah, uh, cascading infrastructure. That is another benefit that you might not think of, but. Uh, a lot of the time, if they are ripping up an old railway, what they can do is they can uh, take the in the rails themselves or the sleepers most commonly, Pro probably not the ballast and stuff, although maybe um, the rails and the sleepers themselves are the main things, but you can either upgrade your own infrastructure uh, around the state or whatever or you can donate it to tourist railways and both have been done very recently in in fact um, well yeah sort of the I'm not so sure about um, what happened to the Lilydale to Healesville infrastructure I don't think that was of particularly high quality anyway but I know a bit of the uh, Maryborough to Castlemaine line, uh, w when that was ripped up, uh, that were a lot of the rails and sleepers and stuff were donated to uh, the Victorian Goldfields Railway, uh, among others. And a bit was also used to upgrade uh, normal V-line infrastructure. Uh, MarTV asks, are they building a rail trail from Lilydale to Yarra Glen? Yes, I believe it's complete. Um, you will, you might have seen uh, Fogarty Avenue's video when uh, we walked the. Well, I only walked to. Um, I don't think it was even Yarra Glen. Uh, Les walked all the way to Lilydale, um, and yeah, documented all that. 
and it's been turned into rail trail now. So cool that we doc well Les documented it, and very cool that uh, there's now a rail trail there, so everyone can enjoy it. Speaking of which, another the last benefit that I've got really written down is that there's a potential tourism boost. Uh, now, there's a bit of debate. There can be a bit of debate about exactly how much of a tourism boost, but I don't think there's any doubt that it does have some tourism boost. In some cases, it might not be much, but it's some. Uh, I walked to Tarawara. There you go, says my TV. Um, yeah. Tourism is a is a big thing. It's one of the biggest appeals for councils and stuff. Uh, anyone who's looking to put in the funding to create a rail trail in the first place, they are more than uh, not banking on the idea that uh, there is going to be a significant tourism boost. Uh, Applehead says, I'm pretty sure that the rail trail hasn't gone past Yering towards Yarra Glen. Oh, okay. I just thought it was all complete now, but um, yeah. My, uh, my information is quite possibly outdated. All right. Um, getting into the disadvantages, uh, old railways are ripped up, uh, so there's a loss of infrastructure, and that does put, uh, it does make opening uh, the line again a little bit harder, but having said that, it's not as big of a deal as I think a lot of railway enthusiasts make it out to be. Because, A, uh, a lot of these lines would need totally renewed infrastructure anyway if they were to reopen. Uh, and, B, if they are let to sit just idle doing nothing for years and years and years, a lot of uh, vegetation grows back. Um, there's, you know big trees which just grow in the middle of the tracks. Um, I've certainly experienced that. Um, and yeah, so that would also, you've got to think about that and how that might make it more difficult to reopen a railway, potentially even more difficult than if it was uh, just a normal rail trail. Because if it's a rail trail, the land is already cleared and there's not I'll talk in a little bit later in the alternatives when I talk about the alternatives about how they don't have to be exclusive um, you don't necessarily have to have either a rail trail or a railway so yeah uh, having said all that it's true that the railway rarely, very rarely, returns uh, when a rail trail is created. But again, a lot of the a lot of the reason behind that is the fact that uh, the railway was built because you know the roads were impassable, and well, the roads aren't impassable now. So, what's the reason for the railway to exist? Uh, you know, the just because the line is closed doesn't mean, uh, I should say, just because a line once had traffic uh, doesn't mean that if it reopened, it would also have traffic. Um, yeah, and Albert says the likelihood of abandoned rail lines reopening is pretty slim, rail trail or no rail trail. Absolutely, and it's just a fact of life. And if you look at a lot of these old railways and you look at, you know, what what were they running like before they closed? A lot of them, you know, they were running on 
barely anything. The weekly goods would have one, yeah, one GY wagon or something like that. So it's just not feasible at all to keep them open. Uh, a lot of them. Uh, Mar TV says, do you think that the Castlemaine to Maryborough line will reopen? I think possibly. Um, not anytime soon, but I think it's possible that it would reopen. I, I, I yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't discount it entirely, put it that way. Um and another disadvantage is that the infrastructure isn't always um reused and recycled. Um the ripping up of the South Gippsland line from uh Nyora to Lee and Gather has shown that. Um unfortunately the contractor was not willing to share any of the infrastructure with people who could actually use the infrastructure. Um, you know, they cut the rails into very short pieces and sold off all the sleepers to... All of this was sold off to private individuals, um, which I think is a real shame. Uh, you know, if, if you're going to rip up the line, okay, fine. But that was a lot of good quality infrastructure. Um, uh, yeah, like it was mainline standard track. That stuff is good. Um, you know, you can run an R class on on that, uh, or, or any of the biggest Victorian locomotives, apart from maybe an S or an H or a H um, steam engines, but. Yeah. Um, rail trails are not free, is another point. They do cost money to maintain. You've got to, to you're going to have a constant fight to uh, keep the vegetation away, and you're going to have a constant fight to just the wear and tear of the rail trail uh, from people using it. Um, and so, yeah, they they do cost a bit of money to keep open, so someone's got to pay for that, and it's usually the ratepayer for the area. Um, does the tourism boost justify it? Um, depends on the scenario. Marta V says, the VGR is reopening tomorrow. Oh, awesome. Uh... Herman's Channel says, because in the 80s that would have been, what would it have been, 100 or so pound rail, that's good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't know the exact weight of rail off the top of my head, but um, yeah, it was, it was high quality stuff. Um, party Music DJ says, there's some news about the Dalesford line being extended. Yes, absolutely. And that is fine. Uh, if that happens. Um, I'm not sure if they cut in, if they will cut into rail trail territory or not. Um, off the top of my head. Uh, and so, yeah. The they, rail trails won't always perform as expected in terms of tourism. So... How do you get an accurate picture? That's that's the big question. So, uh, infrastructure. Oh, sorry. The this these are the alternatives to rail trails. Like if it, if the rail trail wasn't to exist, what would be the alternatives? Well, first and foremost, as we've mentioned, the infrastructure could just sit idle and do nothing and get overgrown and that could be potentially worse for the prospects of reopening because you know it costs more to uh you know uh, cut down a lot of trees that are just growing in the middle of the track so it it's something to consider put it that way um infrastructure sitting idle and it's probably not going to be reopened anyway 
Um, MarTV says, all Victoria focuses on is heavy rail. Why can't they invest in high-speed rail? Well, high-speed rail requires heavy rails as well. Uh, but there's a multitude of reasons. I can talk about that in another live stream. Perhaps uh, the worst prospect in terms of um, the potential for a line to be reopened is when the land is just sold off, when the infrastructure is ripped up and the land is just completely sold off. That has happened in the majority of closed lines and you probably don't know about a lot of them because, yeah, the, the land has been sold off and then only, you know, no, nobody can access the whole length uh, or, or even sections. Um, and so, yeah, um, you might be able to get permission from the various landowners to walk it, um, but it's not a great prospect. Uh, you know, the one thing that is even worse than the land simply being sold off to farmers and the like is in the middle of cities and towns when the land is both sold off but then built on as well. If the railway has been built on, yeah, good luck reopening it. Pretty much the only way you're going to reopen that line is to build a tunnel because <laughs> uh, it's just going to be too expensive to compuls compulsorily acquire all of the homes or whatever that is along the old alignment um yeah that hasn't happened too much in melbourne um which would be the main place um yeah most of our closed lines have either been turned into rail trails which is good or uh yeah i think like the q line for example most of the alignment's still there anyway uh not that the q line will ever reopen but yeah, the point is I don't think there's many lines that have just been built over the top of. Uh, oh, yes, a good example, says um, Herman's Channel, this good bot, of that is Mornington Station. Yeah, the original Mornington Station was built over. Um, and so the tourist railway can't run to the original Mornington Station. They've got to run to their... I newly built one. Um, and so, yeah, there's a thinking of which that is a potential alternative is that the line be turned into a tourist railway. But again, the prospects of it, um, the economics of a tourist railway have to be taken into account as well. And you don't always, uh, it's not always a realistic idea. Um, probably the best example of that was the Kudra line in the northeast. Um, there was a group who was trying to uh, get a tourist railway running uh, and they How should I put it? They made a few big errors, uh, such as running trains when they weren't allowed to. And so they got shut down pretty quick by the government and the infrastructure was ripped up uh, and turned into a rail trail. But I think that they wouldn't have really survived as a tourist railway, even if they had followed proper procedures and got running, etc. Uh, one the final, alt well, the final alternative that I've got written down here is called Rail Track Riders. Now, there is a railway in Tasmania. I'm pretty sure this doesn't exist anywhere else in Australia, but it does elsewhere in the world, where you can hire um, bikes, like push bikes, 
that have been modified to ride on the rails uh and yeah it's not it's not a tourist railway but it's not a rail trail it's sort of in between you can ride on these rail push bikes along the old abandoned railway and when i go to tasmania eventually i'm sure i will do that um so yeah like it's it's quite cool i think that's quite a good idea actually uh, uh, but yeah, I don't. I don't think it's feasible for all. I know, perhaps a couple here there, but yeah. Um, I don't. I don't think it would be feasible on a large scale because you've got to have people willing to run that operation as well. Uh, Albert says a rail trail means that you can still keep all the station infrastructure preserved, sold off, or demolished um, that, is a, that is another benefit of rail trails so finally we'll uh, get into some specific examples of uh, rail trails the South Gippsland line I'll mention first and foremost um, I think that the there's um the the Nyora to Lee and Gatha section I think that it was a bit it was pushed through a bit quickly put it that way um I th there was a group that was attempting to get stuff up and running again I think that they should have been given a chance uh just because other groups have failed in the past doesn't mean they will as well um, and yeah, yeah, the my but my main gripe with that was just that the infrastructure was sold off to private buyers and not given to tourist railways and the like because or even offered to them in the first place to buy. I I think that was just a bit stupid. Um, Herman says, wait, can someone fill me in on what railway ran when they weren't supposed to? Uh, oh, it was the Kudra line in the northeast. Um, there, there's a Walker rail motor sitting in Huon uh, that they, well, the trailer of one, uh, that, um, yeah, they supposedly tried to run uh, and did run it, but that was what caused them to fail. Um, and so it goes the line goes from Wodonga to Kajua, um as a rail trail via human, of course. Um, in terms of the rest of the South Gippsland line, having walked it myself, I think it, I thought it was quite nice. Um, yeah, I, I think that it didn't really have any prospects of being reopened. Lean Gather sort of does, but not the rest. Not to Yarram. Um, so yeah. Um, Lilydale to Yarra Glen. Again, the infrastructure structure was just sitting there and so I think that yeah that that will be a good rail trail when it's done uh, similar similarly Lilydale to Warburton another line where I think it just doesn't really have the prospects of reopening yeah as much as rail fans would like to think um, yeah they they just don't have the uh, the traffic in the area to justify reopening it. Uh, Orbost line from Bensdale to Orbost again, another one where it's nice and scenic. That's another big thing. A rail trail to be successful, the line has to be somewhat scenic. There's a few lines around Victoria that just are not that scenic. 
So I don't think every line should be turned into a rail trail, put it that way. Um, some can be sold off and used for farming because, yeah, I can think of a number of boring lines. Uh, Mansfield and Alexandra lines, they were very long and there's there was a couple of talks, rumours about starting up a tourist railway there, but it would suffer the same fate as Kajwa being too far away from Melbourne. Uh, the patronage on the tourist line just wouldn't cut it, I think. So, yeah. Um, they deserve to be a, a rail trail, and you can still enjoy them as a rail trail. That's one of the main things. Um, same sort of story with Brighton Beechworth, uh, Beach Forest and Crows. Um, yeah, both scenic lines that wouldn't really have a chance of reopening, uh, even if all the infrastructure was perfectly built and there was nothing wrong with it and yeah, that's just not the traffic. Um, so a little bit of uh, stats for you. There is a little over 1,000 kilometres of rail trails in Victoria. Uh, I know this because I made my all lines map and uh, it tells me the length of each section that I draw. Uh, so yeah, just add all of them up and it's a little over 1,000 kilometres. Cool. Um, I think many rail fans wouldn't have even scratched a hundred kilometers of rail trails. So, you know, go out there and enjoy them. Um, for a comparison, there's a little over 2000 kilometers of what I'd call destroyed alignments. So the land has been sold off, um, no, inf or, you know, no infrastructure is remaining. You might still be able to follow it. Um, uh, but yeah, it's nothing official. And we've got about 650, a little bit less than 650 kilometers of disused track that's just sitting there idle, doing nothing. We've got 85 kilometers roughly of tourist railway. And we've got a, a bit over 4,200 kilometers of railway that is in use uh, both with passenger and freight. So, all in all, we've lost about a little bit less than half of our infrastructure, if you like. Um, yeah, if you add up all the disused track um, and destroyed alignments and rail trails. Finally, uh, my own experiences with rail trails. So South Gippsland Line was my biggest direct experience with rail trails. Um, yeah, it wasn't as interesting as the disused infrastructure, but I'd much rather that than... Uh, I'd much rather... Uh, have the rail trail there, then have nothing there at all. Um, and there's a little section from Welshpool to Alberton where there was nothing there, and I wish there was. Uh, yeah, in the thing, we're very laggy. Okay, are we back? Okay. It's very laggy, I'm not sure why, but I think we're all right now. So South Gippsland line, yeah, the things that I really, the thing that I really noticed was that, um, there, 
the amount of people that I encountered walking along the, the track, uh, it would, when the towns were relatively close together, there would be a lot of cross flow. When the towns were a bit further apart, you wouldn't see anyone really in between, but you would see people around the towns. Uh, and even for the ones where the towns were close together, you'd find a higher concentration of people uh, nearest the towns themselves. So that was one way that I could tell without looking at my GPS uh, when I was getting close to a town was because I could see people. Um, and yeah, you'd have chats to people along the way. It was quite nice. Um, definitely would walk it again. Uh, definitely would walk other rail trails. With that in mind, uh, we're getting towards 10 p.m. And in terms of any, any future plans that I have for walking, um, yeah, the I plan to prioritise the lines where there is still infrastructure there that's just disused. Uh, so, yeah, that would be my main thing because, um, you know, that can change, but rail trails are unlikely to change. And, yeah, I would definitely, but I would definitely consider walking rail trails as well, um, especially if it adjoined uh, a disused track. And yeah, uh, I, I had plans to ramp up my walking of, uh, railways this year, but then coronavirus hit and that threw a lot of, uh, my plans just out the window. Um, I still plan to walk a few lines closer to Melbourne uh, in the coming weeks, but I probably won't do any multi-day hikes for a while because let's just say you can't socially distance while you're sleeping in a tent. Uh, and yeah, there's a bunch of other reasons, but hey, Victoria has recorded our 14th day of zero cases, so we're well on the right track. And, uh, yeah, hopefully it will be sooner rather than later that I am able to walk railway lines again. Anyway, uh, that's going to be about it for the stream tonight. Sorry for all the tech troubles. Um, yeah, I'll, it's a really, it was a really weird issue and I don't even know what or how how I would go how I'm going to go about fixing it, but I'll give it a shot. And it's a bit random as well, so all we can do is hope that the chances are that next uh, next stream in two weeks' time, uh, it will be all good. But yeah, thanks to everyone who bared with me all the way through the from the start to the end. Uh, and I'll upload this, this will be on Instagram for a little bit, and I'll also upload it on YouTube in the coming days. Um, and just as a final note, I am hoping, fingers crossed, that we have a proper video coming on Sunday. I know I said that last week, but it's close. All right. Thanks again. Uh, see you next time. And it wasn't a problem with my internet, Herman. <laughs> anyway, see you later. Bye-bye.